When in April 1923, Elizabeth Bowes Lyon married the then 27-year-old Prince Albert of the United Kingdom, she became the first non-royal to marry into the British royal family since Henry VIII married Catherine Parr 400 years earlier. Although Albert was only the second-born son to his parents, he eventually ended up on the British throne when his elder brother abdicated in 1936. Elizabeth and Albert would go on to have two daughters, Elizabeth, born in 1926, and Margaret, born in 1930. Elizabeth succeeded to the British throne when her father suddenly died in 1952. Queen Elizabeth II as such found herself in a situation between royalty and the British nobility through her mother's side of the family. One side was constantly in the spotlight and in the headlines, while the other side of her family was lesser known to the public. So in today's video, we will uncover the lives of Queen Elizabeth II's maternal grandparents. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, came from the noble family Bowes Lyon. The Bowes Lyon family can trace their line back to George Bowes. Sir George Bowes lived in the 1700s and was a Whig politician who sat in the House of Commons for 33 years. He gained his wealth and his influence through coal which was found beneath his estates. The family can also trace their line back to the Royal House of Scotland. With his second wife, George had one daughter named Mary Eleanor Bowes. It was Mary who married John Lyon, the ninth Earl of Stratmore and Kinghorn. At that time, George was already dead and Mary had inherited her father's estates. In order to profit from his wife's possessions, John took on the name Bowes. The family name was later changed to Lyon Bowes and eventually to Bowes Lyon. When George died in 1776, he was succeeded by his son John. As John had only one illegitimate son, he was succeeded by his younger brother, Thomas. Thomas had one son, whom he however outlived. As such, he was succeeded by his grandson, who was also named Thomas. Thomas died childless in 1865 and was succeeded by his brother, Claude. Now Claude was the father of Claude George Bowes Lyon, Queen Elizabeth II's grandfather. Claude George Bowes Lyon, as his full name was, was born on March 14, 1855 in Middlesex, England to his father who was also called Claude Bowes Lyon and his mother Frances Dora Smith. He was the first out of 11 children. Almost all of his siblings lived long lives and only one of them, his youngest sister Evelyn, died in infancy. Through his mother's side of the family, he has a distant but interesting connection to no other than George Washington, the first U.S. president. Claude was educated at Eton College in Berkshire. The college was founded in 1440 by King Henry VI. Claude left college and received a commission in the Second Lifeguards, in which he served for the next six years. He left the army in 1881 when he married Cecilia Cavendish Bentinck. However, he remained an active member of the Territorial Army and served as an honorary colonel. The Territorial Army was a reserve force of the British Army. In 1904, Claude succeeded his father as the 14th Earl of Stratmore and Kinghorn. As such, he inherited many estates in Scotland and England. Among them was St. Paul's Waldenbury, Gibside Hall, Stratlam Castle, Woolmers Park, and most importantly, Glam's Castle, where the family mainly resided. In addition, Claude was made Lord Lieutenant of Angus, a position he would hold until 1923. Claude had a great interest in forestry and was described as a man who enjoyed physical labor. His estates had a large number of small holders, to which tenants Claude was described as unusually kind. He worked his own land on his estates and was as such often mistaked as a common laborer by visitors. Contemporaries say that Claude never tried to impress others and was down to earth. He would make his own cocoa for breakfast and always had a jug of water by his place at dinner so he could dilute his own wine. 
Funnily enough, Claude had reservations about royalty, but nevertheless allowed his daughter to marry the Duke of York in 1923. As such, Claude was made a Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order. In addition, he was made Knight of the Thistle in 1928. When his son-in-law ascended to the throne of the United Kingdom in 1936, Claude was created Knight of the Garter and the first Earl of Stratmore and Kinghorn. This was a newly created peerage in the United Kingdom rather than just one in Scotland. This enabled Claude to sit in the House of Lords. At the same time, Claude was created Knight of the Garter. At the coronation of George VI and his daughter Claude and his wife sat in the royal box with Queen Mary and their granddaughters Elizabeth and Margaret. Towards the end of his life, Claude became deaf. He lastly died in 1944, aged 89, at Glam's Castle. Now let's turn our attention to his wife, Cecilia. Cecilia Nina Cavendish Bentinck was born in Middlesex, England on September 11, 1862. Her father was Charles Cavendish Bentinck, a grandson of British Prime Minister William Henry Cavendish. Cecilia's mother was Caroline Louisa Burnaby, the eldest of three daughters. The Bentinck family is a Dutch noble family which was first founded in the 14th century. Cecilia was also a descendant of the first Tudor monarch, Henry VII. Unfortunately, that is just about what we know of Cecilia's early life. Cecilia and Claude married on July 16, 1881 at St. Peter's Church. Over the span of the next 20 years, the couple would have 10 children. All of them, except for their eldest daughter, Violet, survived to adulthood. When Claude succeeded as Earl of Stratmore and Kinghorn, Cecilia became the Countess. The family mostly resided at Glam's Castle in Scotland, where Cecilia, a keen gardener herself, was responsible for designing the Italian gardens. She was described as a great hostess who played the piano perfectly. In addition, she was deeply religious and preferred a quiet family life. During the First World War, Glam's Castle served as a hospital for the wounded soldiers. Cecilia supported the war efforts until she was diagnosed with cancer and had to stop. In 1921, her uterus and cervix were removed in an attempt to beat cancer. The surgery was successful and Cecilia was even able to celebrate her daughter's engagement to the Prince of York in early 1923. Cecilia suffered a heart attack in 1938 at the wedding of her granddaughter Anne. She died eight weeks later on June 23, 1938 at the age of 75. She was laid to rest four days later at Glam's Castle. Claude was buried next to her after his death six years later.